you know, it's it's sad. Thousands of years after the cross, people are still doubting what really happened on the cross. The death, well, the death, burial, and resurrection. Uh, legalists are still, Pharisees are still saying, no, it's not that easy, right? And uh, people ask us, us in the grace community why we harp on the gospel and free grace so much because that's the only way a person can be saved. And that's, you know, in my opinion, from what I see in the world, one of the main reasons why people don't come to Christianity to actually believe the gospel. First of all, they don't even be given the right gospel. Second of all, they think that they have to forsake all of these things in their life just to be saved because they've been given the wrong gospel see this is why this is so serious you know uh, just talking to legalists and people that don't agree with the truth people believe you have to do something or you have to forsake you have to uh, start being good to get to go to heaven they have that gospel you know uh we're always asking why are we harping on free grace because that's the only way you can be saved I mean what do you mean why are we harp on it so it's, it's, it's wrong to harp on the only way a person can be saved what <laughs> you know and so it's, but it's sad that uh, uh, millions of people possibly will not be saved because they've always heard in their life that you go oh, oh well you want to be saved you gotta come down here you gotta Lay your cigarettes down. You gotta stop doing this. Stop doing that. You gotta watch your mouth. You know, it's like what? Oh no, no more alcohol. If you even think about touching one drop of alcohol, oh no, can't be saved. Just insanity. Okay. Uh, the dummies that call the wine in the Bible all non-alcoholic. I mean, I don't even want to get into that, right? Just all these stupid beliefs that these uh, these legalists have, all right? And these people go to Bible college, okay? These people have went through classes, all right? Well, they go to these institutions that teach the false gospel. They live their whole life. They have their own churches. It's sad, and they're not even saved, right? Uh, because I don't conclude a person that has never uh, believed grace through faith alone, the finished work of Christ, to be a saved person. Okay? Uh, and when they come out in vitriol against that, when you start preaching Christ alone, and the work is finished, and there was one shedding of blood, we are not under the law, Okay, the law has been fulfilled. Christ is the end of the law. We are dead to the law. All of these scriptures about the law that we are dead to. Well, they just change it and say, well, what they meant, Paul meant in those scriptures is the man-made tradition law, not the moral law. Okay, show me that in scripture, idiot. I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> it just makes me mad when they say that. Because that is not in scripture. There's no subcategory of some type of law to keep to stay saved in the Bible. It's not there. You cannot subcategorize the law into different sections and say, well, Jesus fulfilled this, but he didn't fulfill that. There's no scripture in the Bible that teaches that. And yet they tout that. They teach that. The legalist teaches that. That's the only way they can get it. That's the only, that they have to do that. Because if they don't do that, they have to accept the truth that the law is the 613 laws of Moses, including the Ten Commandments. See, they don't want to include the Ten Commandments in there. Okay, because they got to keep those so they can stay saved and get saved, right? Because they're lost. It's just, I'm sure you, some of you guys out there have heard this nonsense from these people. That all of the scriptures about, we're not under the law, we're dead to the law, Christ is the end of the law. That law word it's talking about is, well, that doesn't mean the moral law. Okay, <laughs> One guy told me that actually like a week or so ago. And I just started busting out laughing at work. He looking at me like I'm some kind of devil, you know. And I'm looking at him like, okay, man, you know, 
if what you're saying is true, show me this scripture, okay? Well, he never could show me any scripture. He's just, he's parroting what he was taught by some preacher that doesn't even know his rear end from a hole in the ground, okay? And now I'm starting to, you know, understand what Paul really felt in Galatians, or whenever he said, whoever he was talking about, when they came in and taught wrong teaching, right? Paul was so angry with these people, right? Uh, just ridiculous, because this is what sends people to hell. This is what prevents people from being saved. This right here is the irony of the whole situation that a person could be so close yet so far away, right? A person can be in church, looking, playing the part, all of these things, yet be so far away at the same time. And then they make other people like them, right? They, you know, they just keep this, and the cycle continues. And that's what we're here for, the Free Grace Community, to spread the true gospel, to say, no, you can't do it, You're, you can't save yourself, you have to rely on Christ alone. And when you get saved, you will have the Holy Spirit indwelling in you, you have a new heart, a new spirit, God's spirit living in you, right? And then the Lord will be your teacher. You don't need to be shown all these rules and regulations. You know what's right and wrong on the inside when you're born again and turned into a new creation, okay? But these people, they don't have that. They're still a fleshly vessel, right? With no God in them. God is not in them, right? So if you ever have any one of these uh, alleged prophets, legalists, uh, self-righteous fools, uh, oh, that's a big one if they would have heard me say that. And so Jesus said, if anybody calls somebody a fool, they'll be in danger of hellfire. They didn't understand not the context of that. <laughs> But anyways, uh, claiming uh, the law Paul talked about was just the men, the human tradition, extra biblical traditions that the Pharisees were adding. That is, and there's no scriptural evidence at all for that. It's a diversion tactic. It's a false. It's just trash, is what it is. All right. Uh. Anytime the law is talked about in the Bible, it's the Mosaic Law, right? It's the 613 commandments that were engraved on stone, Paul specifically says. The ministry of death, he calls it. You know, and you bring that up to them and they will... Uh, see, they don't, they don't ever think of these things. And it just, it's, it's shocking that people go to schools to try to learn these things. Okay? Seminaries and just, you know... And they don't know, like I said, up from down, left to right. Then they commence to go teaching other people. And like I said, a person can be so close yet so far at the same time. Trying to seek God, but being told and turned away at the door. Just exactly what Jesus said about the Pharisees. Blind guides. You lead people away from the kingdom of God. You you shut the uh, you shut up the kingdom of God where no one can go in you can't go in and no one else can go in. All right, you you search far and wide to create a convert and you make him twice the son of Satan that you ever were. All right, and this just falls in perfectly with how these people are. Uh, it's just the game is so deep and deceptive uh, that the enemy has taken a foothold into what humans think is the is your friend is a is a pastor with the bible no uh if they don't believe the gospel they're not saved and they're not your friend okay they need to get told the gospel uh, then they'll use their they'll appeal it to their authority against you right well how long have you went to bible school how long have you ever pastored your own church like any of that matters, it doesn't. I don't care how many people you have in your congregation. If you are not teaching the truth, you are not teaching, you're not on God's side. You're the enemy, right? I'd rather have a congregation of one person 
with a true gospel and of a congregation with 5,000 with a false gospel. Uh, and then you get the ones that you question them on this and you press them on it and they tiptoe around the truth when you really press them on it and they start they it starts being revealed that they're adding works to their gospel they'll tiptoe around it and say well i didn't say you have to work for your salvation you just works need to be present and that's also not true okay i'm kind of going through the abc's once these are what us grace believers deal with all the time when we try to spread the truth, uh, the, the snakes in the grass, why, right? You know, it's funny, like, a lot of places, you know, most people at a place at your job site, they know if a preacher works there. Oh, everybody knows he's the preacher. He's the, he's the preacher guy, you know. It's funny uh, that a, people know, oh, a preacher, a preacher, and they automatically assume they're saved. They automatically assume they're of God. They you know, that's, that's the enemy's game. They want you to think, oh, yeah, I ain't do all the light. All right, masquerading around. That's who we're fighting against, and it's a spiritual battle because all we can see is physical flesh and uh, physical objects. So you test these people with the gospel and ask them, what do you believe? Uh, nine times out of ten, the big-time anti-gospel, anti-grace devils will really try to sink their teeth into you they'll get so angry at you you know when you try to tell them that hey buddy everybody's saved by what jesus did alone they get so angry about that oh so you're telling me or we've all heard this oh you're telling me you could murder 10 people and still go to heaven yes oh the you know then they'll just act flabbergasted they'll act shocked they'll tear their you know garment in half like the stupid Pharisees did when Jesus said he is God you know or he's the son of God uh, but, you know, like what so they view murder unforgivable or that means you're not saved even though we have countless Christ Christians in the Bible that committed that and it was forgiven right to not as bad as what they do. And it all boils down to the way they view sin. They think what they do is swept under the rug and it's okay. But what you do is not swept under the rug and it's not okay. Right? They view themselves. I had a, pit pre a person that works with me a couple of months ago. Okay. Say that. Uh, talking about other. Uh, we were on the. We were on the uh, subject about denominations. He said, I don't think I'm better than them. I know I'm better than them. And I was just like, wow, dude, at least you're honest. <laughs> he was talking about some of the denomination, you know, Christian, so-called Christian denomination. And his denomination wasn't even biblical, right? They believe in salvific loss. But they're going to pass judgments on another denomination. And he said, I don't think I'm better than them. I know I'm better. Because the way you live, that's what they look at. They take what Jesus said out of context of fruits, by, by your fruits you should know them, and they think, yeah, any little thing you do wrong, and that means you're not saved. It's just insane, but they never turn this mirror around on themselves, right? Or when they do, they lie to themselves and say, what they do is not bad enough. Oh, I still sin, but mine are small minor infractions compared to your infractions that deserve crucifixion. See, that's the human pride speaking. And that's what blinds people. They could get so close, but yet so far away to the gospel. And then they live a false life of salvation, false assurance by their, their performance. Their assurance is all wrapped up in their performance. When they lay down at night, all they thought about is oh, their performance. They wake up in the morning, they think about their performance, and they think that this performance is going to keep them or get them saved, keep them safe, you know. And what does that show? That they don't trust Jesus. They live their life as if they do not trust God, touting every second of their life that they do trust God when they don't really trust God. Okay? And this is the sick irony of the whole situation. I'm about to wrap this up. Is that <clears throat> a whole life could be devoted to a false gospel. A whole life could be devoted to a false, sick idea of God. That's not even true. 
And then you have the other category I've talked about before that's got saved at a young age or whatever, but then got wrapped up into this, and then they look just like these other Pharisees. But then they come back around eventually, right? Or they may never come back around. People that actually believed right and then got deceived by false doctrine, they may live a miserable existence and die in that miserable existence. They're still saved, but it's their own fault for uh, letting deception come in. But thank God for His grace and mercy that He wake, can wake us up if we accept the truth and just rely on Him and believe. God just wants to be believed and trusted, you know? If Adam and Eve would have done, if Eve would have done that and Adam, you know, none of this would have had to happen. But I mean, listen, like I said, you go down the phys philosophical rabbit trail of why the tree was cut in the garden, why this, why that. You know, God has His plans. You know, how would we have actually ever known true sacrifice, love, forgiveness, justice, mercy, if it wasn't for the cross? If we were always brought up in an eternal bliss of perfection, never had to suffer or go through this, how would we ever really know God's love of Him coming down in flesh and coming down and being in this flesh body and suffering for us? How could we ever really have known that, Steve? And that, then, then you can go, you can get lost on that rabbit trail for a million years. But anyways, guys, love you guys. Just wanted to get another little video out there. And why we do this is because one of the main reasons, well, it's because we love everybody, because we are filled with the Holy Spirit, and we want everybody to be saved. I don't, I don't love, I don't I hate the thought of a person suffering for all of eternity, and it could have been, and it didn't have to be that way. That should make every born again believer upset. To push you to go out there to save souls. I'm not talking about standing on the corner every day screaming your lungs out. I'm talking about social media, anything you can do to put the gospel out there. That's you're, you're doing your part, you know. And if you don't do that, there's no condemnation to those that are in Christ, right? But life is a lot more fulfilling when you let the Holy Spirit work through you to see people get saved. That was what Paul's talking about. His reward is to see the fruits of his labor, see these souls saved. Right? He planted, and uh, then the watering got done, and you know, and God gave the increase, you know. And we do this because I can't stand the fact that a person can be not end up not saved because they thought that salvation was about you having to clean up your life to get to go to heaven. That is not the gospel. The gospel is God resurrecting you, giving you new life when you haven't had a chance when we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. <clears throat> If you can trust on God, Christ alone and His death, burial, and resurrection, you are saved eternally. Because it, because how? How are you saved eternally? Because it didn't require you to do anything to achieve that, but trust Christ. And He forgave you of all your sins, took care of it all, justified, born again, new life, new heart, new spirit. It may take you a while in your life to mature through things, but we're all going at different paces. We're all individuals, guys. Love you guys. Have a great day.